first book that I picked up. <laughs> the first one I want to, tr well, not that it'll be the first one, but we're just going to talk about it. This book I want to get into is called Grave Matins by Kelly Kuhn. Beauty is a, a Sacrifice. Now I haven't heard too many people talking about this book, but it sounds interesting. In the walled city state of Alu Kemakane? wants nothing more than to become the accomplished healer her father used to be before her family was cast out of their privileged life in shame. When Alu's ruler falls deathly ill, Kemakane's beautiful little sister Nenathia is chosen as one of the three scarred maidens to join him in the afterlife. It's an honor, a tradition, and Nania believes it is her chance to live in an even grander life than the one that was stolen from her. But Kamekin sees the selection for what it really is, a death sentence. Desperate to save her sister, Kamini schemes her way into the palace. There she discovers more danger lurking in the sandstone courtiers than she could have ever imagined and that her own life and heart are at stake. But Kamenin will stop at nothing to dig up the palace's buried secrets even if it means sacrificing everything including herself. Now that sounds really good. Three chosen maidens, two lovely sisters, one dark tradition. I'm excited. <laughs> Alright. Okay, we'll just grab this one. Alright, this one is Baby Teeth by Zoji Stage. Sweetness can be deceptive. Meet Hannah. Seven-year-old Hannah is sweet but silent angel in the eyes of her adoring father, Alex. He is the only person who understands her, but her mother, Suzette, stands in her way, and she'll try any trick she can to get rid of her, ideally for good. Meet Suzetta. Suzetta loves her daughter, but after years of explosions and stranded homeschooling, her precious health and sanity are weakening day by day. She's also becoming insecurely frightened by Hannah's little games. While her husband Alex remains blind to the falling family dynamics, soon Suzetta starts to, to fear that maybe their supposedly innocent baby girl may have a truly sinister agenda. That sounds good as well. I haven't heard a whole lot of people talk about this either. But it's been around for a little while. I want to say maybe 2019. Let's see if that theory is correct. Oh, 2018. So that theory was not correct. But, like I said, it's been around for a little bit. But we'll see if we like it. We were hoping. Alright. The next book I want to get to I've had around for a little bit. And I'm excited. It is called The Forgetting by... Sharon Cameron, I made I made of memories. What isn't written isn't remembered, even your crimes. 
Nadia lives in the city of Canania, where life is safe and structured, hemmed by white stone walls and no memory of what came before. But every 12 years, the city descends into a bloody chaos of the forgetting, a day of no consequences and no remorse, when each person's memories of parents, children, love, life, and self are lost, unusually, or unless they have been written. Sorry, words. In Kenya, your book is your truth and your identity, and your identity, and Nadia knows exactly who hasn't written the truth because Nadia is the only person in Kenania who has never forgotten. But when Nadia becomes begins to use her memories to push beyond the walls and solve the mysteries of Kenania, she discovers the truth about herself and Gray, the handsome and dramatic glass blower that will change her world forever. As the archery of the next forgetting approaches, Nadia and Gray must stop an unseen enemy that threatens both their city and their own existence before the people can forget the truth, and before Gray can forget her. Now that sounds good too. Like I said, I've had this for a few years, never got around to reading it, so I am this month, or next month, and then I also have the sequel to this as well, if we like them. Alright, that is the second book. The first book I'm going to talk to, I'm going to try to buddy read this with my one of my best friends over at Faith Lane Author. Hi, Faithy. Alright, and the book we're going to try to buddy read is How to Hang a Witch by Adrian Matter. I've had this one for a little while, haven't heard a whole lot of people talk about it, but it sounds so good. I want to read this one and if I like it, I also have the second book, which is The Haunting Deep, so I don't want to know too much about this one without getting into this first. So, Salem, Massachusetts is the site of infamous witch trials and the new home of a 16-year-old girl, Samantha Mather. Recently transplanted from New York City, Sam is not exactly welcomed with open arms. She is the descendant of Cotton Matter, one of the men responsible for those trials, and most immediately she becomes the enemy of a group of girls who call themselves the descendants. And guess who their ancestors were? As if dealing with that wasn't enough, Sam finds herself face to face with a real, live, well, technically dead ghost. A handsome, angry ghost who wants Sam to stop touching his stuff. Soon, Sam discovers she is the center of a centuries-old curse affecting everyone with the ties to the trials. Sam must come to the terms with the ghost and work with the descendants to stop a deadly cycle that has been going on since the first alleged witch was hanged. If any town should have learned its lesson, it's Salem, but history may be about to repeat itself. Like I said, I've had this one for a few years and I'm ready to dive on into this finally. Then after I get this one done, like I said, I plan on reading the second book, which is The Haunting Deep by Adriana Matter. And like I said, I don't want to know too much about this one because I want to go to the second book blind. So these two, we're going to try. The other book I want to get into is The Outletters by Kimberly Mc... McCree? Trust your incense. Wiley hasn't heard from Cassie in over a week, not since their last fight, but that doesn't matter. Cassie's in trouble, so Wiley decides to do what she has done so many times before. 
save her best friend from herself. This time it's different though. Instead of telling Wiley where she is, Cassie sends a cryptic clues. And instead of having Wiley come by herself, Jasper shows up saying Cassie sent him to help. Trusting the guy who sent Cassie off the rails doesn't feel right, but Wiley has no choice. She has to ignore her gut instinct and go with him. But figuring out where Cassie is goes from difficult to dangerous fast. As Wiley and Jasper head farther and farther north into the distant woods of Maine, Wiley struggles to control her growing sense that something is really wrong. What isn't Cassie telling them? And could finding her only be the beginning? In this breakthrough tale of intrigue, betrayal, and deeply buried secrets, New York Times bestselling author Kimberly McRae brilliantly chronicles a, a faithful journey that begins with every single decision and ends up changing everything. That sounds good. A spellbinding thriller, thriller that keeps you guessing until the very last page. I'm intrigued. I don't know about you, but I am. Alright, the next book I want to try to get into is the second book, Two Girls of Paper and Fire, and that is Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Mannion. We escaped in the dark of the night, believing we would now lead our lives in the light of the sun, but we discovered that we could not truly be free. Not until those who imprisoned us were stopped. We may not be paper girls anymore, but we can still spark fire. And now we have a whole world to set ablaze. And that's all I really want to know. So this one, because like I said, it is book number two in the series. And just look how gorgeous it is. I also painted the, the blue in this book. So, so pretty. Can't wait to get to it. Alright, the other one I want to try and get into is The Chain by Adrian McNitty. I haven't heard a whole lot about this one either, but we're going to give the description. The morning starts like any other. Rachel Kellen drops her daughter, Kylie, at the bus stop and heads into her day. But then a cell phone call from an unknown number changes everything. On the line is a woman informing Rachel that she has Kylie bound and gagged and in her back seat and the only way Rachel will ever see her again is she pays a ransom and kidnaps another child. The caller is a mother herself whose son has also been abducted and if Rachel doesn't do exactly what she's told, the boy will die and so will Kylie. Rachel is now part of the chain. A terrifying scheme that turns parents from victims into criminals and is making someone else a very rich in the process. Rachel is an ordinary woman, but over coming the days she will be pushed beyond ordinary limits, she will have to make impossible moral choices and do terrible things. The chain is ruthless, terrifying, and completely anonymous. The rules are simple. Find the money, find your victim, and then commit a horrible act you have taught yourself incapable just 24 hours ago. What the masterminds behind the chain know is the parents will do anything for their children, but what they don't know is that they may have finally met their match. Rachel is smart, determined, and a survivor. Can she be the one to finally break the chain? I guess stay tuned for October's wrap up and I'll let you know. But it sounds super good and it's been out for a little bit and just time consuming. But we're going to try to get all these books done in October. Here's the whole thing. But we're not quite done yet. The other book I really want to get into is Imaginary Friend by Stephen Shabalski. He is also the best-selling author of The Perks of Being a Wallflower. 
All right. Christopher is seven years old. Christopher is the new kid in town. Christopher has an imaginary friend. We can swallow our fear or let our fear swallow us. A single mother, Kate's race is on the run. Determined to improve life for herself and her son, Christopher. She flees an abusive relationship in the middle of the night with her child. Together they find themselves drawn to the tight-knit community of Mill Grove, Pennsylvania. It's far off the beaten track as they can get. Just one highway in, one highway out. At first, it seems like the perfect place to finally settle down. Then, Christopher vanishes. For six long days, no one can find him until Christopher emerges from the woods at the edge of town, unharmed, but not unchanged. He returns with a voice in his head only he can hear, with a mission only he can complete. Build a treehouse in the woods by Christmas or his mother and everyone in the town will never be the same again. Now Chabosky has returned with an epic work of literary horror, years in the making, whose grand scale and rich emotion redefined the genre. Read it with the lights on. <laughs> That's funny. But this also sounds super good and I can't wait. I can't wait for any of them, but they sound super good. Needed a drink. Alright, and if it wasn't spooky enough, I am also going to try and get the audiobook for Bag of Bones by Stephen King, and this one looks like to be a long one too. Alright, Bag of Bones, four years after a sudden death of his wife, 40-year-old best-selling novelist Mike Nolan is still grieving. Unable to write and plagued by vivid nightmares, set at a western Maine summer house he calls Sarah Laughs. Mike recently returns to the lakeside getaway. There he finds a beloved Yankee town held in the grip of a powerful millionaire Max DeVore, whose Effectivate purpose is to take his three-year-old granddaughter, Kara, away from her widowed young mother, Maddie. As Mike is drawn into Maddie and Kyra's struggle, as he falls in love with both of them, he is also drawn into the mystery of Sarah's laughs. Now, in the sight of a ghostly visitation and escalating terrors, what are the forces that have been unleashed here. And what do they want of Mike Noman? It is no secret that Keen is one of our most memorizing storytellers. In the back of bones, he proves to be one of our most moving as well. And from what I remember, this is a movie, I can't remember if I've seen it or not, but after reading the book, I might be looking for it to watch. Alright, we got one, two, three, four more books left to talk about, and that's all we have for this month. Alright, the next one is The Storm. Is this a sequel? Okay, so this isn't the first book. Okay, so I'm not going to get too much into it because this is the second book. The first book that I want is the H2O. Some people walk in the rain, some people die. Ooh. It sounds like it'll be super spooky. And we like spooky, so we're not going to get into this one because apparently it's book two and I didn't know it was book two, but... Sorry about that. I'll find book one and then I'll do a description for that later. But we'll get into the next book, which is That Night by. S I'm not gonna even try to say this last, this first one. Well, 
is by Bag Balog. Some secrets are best left buried. She'll do anything to remember that night. It has been a year since Haley's boyfriend, Declan, died, and Haley is still far from okay. She's lost almost all of her friends, her grades are failing, and she's pretty much lives wrapped up in bed. Everyone says Declan's death was a suicide. After all, his father's gun was found near his body. But Haley knows the happy, confident Declan she knew would never do that. She's positive. The problem is she can't remember anything from the day he died. Kane, Declan's stepbrother and Haley's best friend, thinks everyone should move on. Why relive the pain? But Haley sees a strange photograph with a threatening message hidden in Declan's belongings. She's convinced that there's more to the story. Haley starts searching for answers and throws herself into memories her subconscious tried to make her forget. And the deeper she looks, the more she remembers. But the truth she uncovers will be more dangerous and more devastating than she could have ever imagined. Now that sounds good. Alright, the other one I have is The Cheerleaders by Cara Thomas. There are no more cheerleaders into the town of S Sunnybrook. The First, there was a car accident not long after the murders happened. Monica's sister was the last cheerleader to die. After her suicide, Sunnybrook High disband the cheerleader squad, the cheer squad. No one wanted to be reminded of what happened. That was five years ago. Now that the faculty and the students at Sunnybrook want to remember the lost cheerleaders, but for Monica it's not that easy. She just wants to forget. Only Monica's world is starting to unravel. There are the letters in, the, in her stepdad's desk an unearthed years old cell phone, a strange new friend at school, what a, whatever happened five years ago isn't over. Some people in town know more than they're saying, and somehow Monica is at the center of it all. <clears throat> there are no more cheerleaders in Sunnybrook, but that doesn't mean anyone else is safe. We don't know why we like this. <laughs> Alright, another book I'm going to real quickly talk about is Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer. The gods are hunting. The witches are gathering. An ancient evil will wake. Ooh. A 17-year-old, Diana Wallace is struggling to cope with her somatic OCD, the aftermath of being outed as bisexual in her conversation Irish town, and the return of her long-absent mother who barely seems like a parent. But all that really matters is her ascending and finally, finally becoming a full witch. Plans that are comp complicated when another coven rumored to have a sordid history with black magic Whew. arrives in town with the Prometheus of death. Diana immediately finds herself at odds with the bewitching, frustrating Mir Keen, the granddaughter of their coven leader, and then a witch turns up murdered at a logo scarred site along with blood symbol of a butcher of manchester an infamous serial killer whose trail has long gone cold the killer's motives are enmeshed in a complex web of witches and gods and dinah and 
meaner soon find themselves at the center of it all. If they don't stop the butcher, one of them will be next. That sounds super good. And I got white. Uh, Alright, that is all the books I want to try to plan on reading in October, along with my Hocus Pocus TBR video, which will be separate from this one, but I plan on reading all of these books. Whew, by the end of the month, brain might be a little fried. We don't know. But, that is all I have for today's video, and I will see you guys, hopefully, in another new video here soon, so... Until then, I will see you guys, and if you're new here, go ahead and hit the like button, and go ahead and subscribe if you aren't already, and I will see you shortly. Bye! -bye. Okay, I finally found the book <laughs> to what I was looking for for H2O, because this is the first book, and the storm is book two. My bad. It's in the rain. Just one drop will kill you. By Virginia Bergen. 27 is a number Ruby hates. It's a number that marks the percentage of the population that survived. It's a number that means she is one of the lucky few still standing. And it's a number that says her father is probably dead. Against all odds, Ruby has survived the catastrophic onset of the killer rain. Two weeks after the radio started broadcasting the warning, it's in the rain, it's fatal, it's contagious, and there's no cure. The drinkable water is running out. Ruby is left with two options. Preserve on her own or embark on a treacherous journey across the country to find her father if he's still alive. The end is just the beginning. Don't miss the storm. Ooh. So, we're hopefully getting into this one. It's on the tree. Alright. 